Today's video is a bit different. This is a conversation with Sam Hawking, founder of the Mix.me, an AI-based stem separation service for Atmos Mixing. This is a service that is aimed at professional sound engineers and goes far beyond what you can do with off-the-shelf tools. Sam is an IT professional by day and an immersive audio nerd by night. He is also a very prolific contributor to many spatial audio forums and discussion boards. If you are active in this space, chances are that you interacted with him at some point. The following conversation is an edited down version of a discussion that we had on our new podcast, Spatial Audio Monthly. If you're interested in this type of content, I strongly encourage you to check that out and subscribe to our new podcast channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, or you can also interact with Sam and me directly on our Discord community. Link is going to be in the description as well. And with that being said, here's Sam and the Mix.me. So let's, let's yeah. move on to the... I actually wanted to talk about something that you do, and that, that is sort of yeah. this, the mix me. Uh, can, okay. can you tell me a little bit what that is and what the purpose is and what, what your goals are? Sure, yeah, I still still quite early days. Um, there's a lot of music out there that doesn't necessarily have the, the assets of what made the final stereo track. So you've got, um, you've got maybe um political reasons between managers or labels and artists and people don't necessarily actually have the individual stems to create spatial audio or a new mastered stereo mix even um and so that i i was i was messing around with some um it was called uh uh deezer splitter which is mm -hmm. a is a free free open it's not, i think it's open source um is these are the I think they're a music, French music or film um, streaming service, I think. Um, and I they, didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so so that, 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 that is kind of part of that streaming service? Because I think that I, algorithm is used in many... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, lots of people use it. Uh, uh, Isotope RX, have, I don't know if they still use it, but a lot of the the rebalance feature in Isotope RX is based on Deezer Splitter, apparently. In oh, fact, Deezer Splitter lists list Isotope as using it on their on their github i didn't so. know that that was kind of yeah. connected to the streaming service that's interesting um, uh, yeah but then uh, what the one i'm using one of the ones i'm using at the moment is connected to um facebook um <laughs> so it's, it's strange why that anyway so this is is this what they call ai they, the official term is um instrument uh source separation iss is, is kind of the academic term of it um and it's, it's basically using deep learning and artificial intelligence to say, this is what a vocal sounds like. This is what a guitar sounds like. This is what drums sound like. The technology is to a point where you can get enough of these stems back out of the stereo clearly enough that you get a little bit of control over them spatially to create an Atmos mix. Um, and I shared, uh, I shared some results with some of the forums that I'm on, uh, particularly the some of the Atmos engineers. Um and they started coming to me, oh I've got this I've got this track. Um we don't have any assets for it. All I've got is the 44.1 C D. Um uh can we get the you know can we get the vocals out because they want to do an Atmos mix of it. Or sometimes it's purely because the way this the AI separation works everything sums back to the stereo again. Um, and there's no difference. It nulls with it. So you can separate it all out. As long as you play it all back together as, uh, as it's been separated, it's essentially still the stereo mix. And I think uh, some, well, I know, I know this, this to be the case. Some engineers like the fact that they are already working with the stereo master mm -hmm. already separated, but in a spatial um, you know, Dolby Atmos um, environment. So all of the matching of the the Atmos kind of dynamics and sound to the stereo is it's kind of already done for them because all they've got to do is play it all together, and they've still got the stereo track. So, but what they do like is they've got they've got the control that ah oh, I can add a bit of compression on the vocal or um or even you know de deverb um the vocal that has been separated so that they can then add a more modern reverb or, you know, multi-channel reverb 
that suits the Atmos kind of sense. So they come to me, I I use AI and everything that I've learned about all the tools that are best for each task. Um, because there, there's certain, certain, they, ways, certain ways of demixing requires certain knowledge. It's not right. like you can just throw it all into one product and it spits out stems. You've really got to understand well, what really does get a trumpet sound the, the best out of yeah, yeah. this style of music. So it's, it's, it's partly, it's partly knowing what all the technology is out there, but partly you need, to, it, it's not something, it's not something you can quickly pick up. There's, there's several hundred hours just reading up about stuff and experimenting. And, and I think that's why they come back to me and say, oh, I've never heard anything separated that well before. It's, it's mainly because probably nobody's really, or no engineer themselves would have had the time to research what I did. So they're left with what they yeah, do they, with, they kind of with the, this, and stuff. This, this, uh, this uh, kind of um, the stem separation kind of technologies are getting better and better, right? I mean, the FL Studio, yeah. FL Studio now has that included, for example, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, um, and, and, yeah. And and they're they're getting really really good. So so kind of uh, but but uh, did I hear that right? So you're actually kind of working with some interesting people, but you can't really say who it is, right? Y y yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think because it it's a little bit it's still I think to some extent viewed a little bit like up mixing where it's it kind yeah, of like cheat yeah. like cheating and, like cheating. Yeah. And then but some rightly so. I mean, it's not they. they, they they rank um, how good an algorithm is. They call it an SDR um, figure, mm -hmm. higher, the be higher the better. And that's the signal to distortion ratio. So, uh, sorry, signal to distortion ratio. And what they're, what they're doing is they've got a, a data set of already mixed um, tracks and their source stems from, you know, from the studio. So they know exactly what, that bass sounds like that vocal sounds like because it's already separated. But then they test the algorithm on the mixed stereo track, mm -hmm. and so they then compare what's demixed with the original stem, and that signal to distortion ratio is how much is left when you null the stem back to the um, back to what you've uh, separated. And that that residue is basically considered the noise that, because that, that, it, it, it didn't exist in the it didn't exist in the right. original stem. You've the algorithm's taken more than it should out of the stereo master, or even less out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, yeah. So you, you essentially you you say right this nulled um, ninety percent of what separated is in the original stem. Ten percent actually belongs to something else. This once you get down to you know just a few percent difference the human brain doesn't doesn't really notice it especially once it, once it's all played back together what hap what generally happens um say say we've got something that's 80 percent separated um so, so, um like gu guitars and pianos and stuff like that mixed together are very difficult to separate because they're a very similar sounding instrument in a similar frequency band um and so you, you might not necessarily be able to pull those out really cleanly to separate mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what would happen is as you separate them in the Atmos space, say you put put uh, the piano, you know, up here and um, the guitar, um, you know, bottom right or whatever, um, far away from it, it would start to rip. It would rip the kind of the stereo mix apart. You'd have this kind of hole in the middle because mm -hmm. all of the the, the original stem hasn't dragged down to where the guitar is. Some of it's still left up with the piano. Um, and so that's the, the greater the separation in terms of the this SDR, the higher the SDR ratio. So the more signal you've managed to separate, basically, the more control you've got to process it with other effects or move it around kind of the Atmos space. That's super, that, that, that's super interesting. So, so kind of... Uh... Uh, and and kind of people come to you and and uh, then essentially you help them separate that uh, that uh, yeah. stereo yeah. file into their into their into their stems, yeah. so that they can um, sort of turn that into a Dolby Atmos uh, um, kind of mix. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's super. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. Yeah, so so this this is sort yeah. of a side a side, a side kind of uh, a hobby that you do, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean because. 
I don't think there's not a, well, like I said, there, there's not a huge number of Dolby Atmos studios. Yeah. Um, and not there's not yet, and there's not there's not a huge amount of people doing this AI kind of demixing. Yeah. People are aware of it because of it's kind of included in you know in various softwares like Isotope RX and things like that. But people aren't really aware of where the kind of cutting edge side to it is happening and it yeah. doesn't exist in a software program you can buy it's it's you know and it's, it's, in, it's, it's not, in github it's, and it's just right. word of mouth and it's people experimenting it's a lot of it a lot of it doesn't even exist as a program you have to go on to like a google collab um uh resource and you kind of build the you build the project because it's in php probably or um or python rather um and you build you build the projects on a in the cloud basically and then you use some uh, GPUs that you know Google let you um, kind of rent um, to train the models, and um, you know, some of it takes could might take you know two hours to separate or with a you know quite a high high end GPU run running at maximum for two or three hours. It's a huge amount of data that it's um, it's using. So. Uh, so, so probably, that, that, yeah, yeah. So, so that 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 is that is that is quite interesting. So kind of because I, I was thinking, right? So if you if you're using these uh, software that you can that you can purchase, Repex, for example, or or any yeah. other kind of thing, uh, it's not that. First of all, it's not that straightforward to use. Uh, you kind of you need to really know what you're doing in order to yeah. get the best uh, quality. Yeah. But from what you're telling me, essentially, you actually kind of go beyond that by really kind of using the algorithm and kind of taking advantage of that algorithm and optimizing that and running that through a, you know, kind of GPU based uh, processing yeah. kind of kind of artificial intelligence processing neural network, whatever, deep learning yeah. processing uh, yeah. a process yeah, so the, to, to yeah, get the, the best the best quality possible, right? Yeah, the the the, the software generally like RX and RipX, um, that that's kind of a moment in time of the the industry in terms of they've got a model that is their kind of data set of how they're gonna decide what is a guitar, what is a vocal. Um, but it's a snapshot in time. A lot of it. That's why the, the Isotope RX is relatively dated now. It's um, if you if you looked at the SDR score of uh, isotope rx rebalance even though it's considered industry standard it's probably ranking about i don't know 200th highest in terms of how you could separate that same piece of audio it's quite low down i mean Two, a lot of them it, it, 200th a, uh so essentially yeah, yeah. kind of rank 200 so so they're but like it, 199 above it or i mean this is an ongoing kind of chart oh, okay yeah, but yeah. there there is but there are there are people that rank that rank this there are people that they they will they will rate every algorithm, and it's it's ranked in this SDR. Uh, we, we, we could, we'll, we'll share some, we'll share some notes at the end. Yeah, that, that that that's actually that interesting. So you can so. see, and it will it will tell you this is RipX, this is um, Isotope, um, but it's not a fixed kind of ranking because different music separates better in different algorithms. Um, so it's just a general one-on-one -on -one data set of music. It's not it's not saying this is 200th best it's just giving you an idea of, yeah, uh, okay. yeah no, i understand, I understand. Um, so yeah no it's it's yeah it's it's i mean the the beatles last album was we were pretty pretty certain it was done using very very similar techniques that that um that i use and, and others as well um where they they had they had a little bit of luxury because they had the they had the i think it was um back then they used a three or four track tape so they they kind of had maybe a vocal and a guitar on one track and a, a bass um, and another vocal on another um so they they already had it separated you know um a little bit and then they just use the ai yeah, to separate yeah. it again until they had everything individually that's that's super that's super interesting so so um so so are you kind of if if some if people have in, interest and kind of questions can they come to you and and uh sure yeah yeah uh, so the the website is dmix.me so d e m i x dot e um -E. Uh, sorry me <laughs> um and my email is sam at dmix.me so, yeah, so so far, if, if there are any questions right so 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 uh, contact sam um he is the expert when it comes to demixing 
Um, and yeah. uh, you know, if you, if you guys have any Probably. thoughts about uh, uh, if this is a good idea, kind of, uh, or any questions, uh, hit, hit us uh, in yeah. the comments or kind of uh, contact us directly. Yeah. I, I do while I'm kind of growing the, the business, I do offer a, a free first track as well. So oh, nice. if you do, you can you can try me out for free, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. That, and people that's... do use it quite a lot, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no, um, yeah I imagine. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the hope is it, you will come to me eventually with a whole album, and and I'll recoup it. But <laughs> Cause it, it's not a, It can be quick, but sometimes you get a piece of music that you know you'll spend half a weekend on it because yeah. it's just not. There's just not a simple way to do it, but you. You know, I'll I'll always, you know, I'll take the rough of the smooth. It, if it if it takes me an hour or two, brilliant. But if it's going to take longer, then I, I actually learn a lot more from the ones that are a challenge. Obviously, so I take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's I take always... it as a learning pro learning a, a reason to learn as well because it forces you a little bit. Whereas, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, 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 no, yeah. Hit, hit me up, hit me up. That's fine. Yeah. This is all for today. Thanks again for watching. If you found this video interesting, please consider subscribing to this channel or to our new podcast channel, Spatial Audio Monthly. If you have any questions or comments, please use the comment section below or join our Discord community. Once again, link is in the description below. And with that being said, see you at the next video.